Hey guys, what's up? It's Finch here, and we're back for another edition of Metagame Mondays. Today we're going to be discussing teleport and pivoting in SSU, as well as the concept of momentum. So, for those of you who don't know, when you use the move teleport, it gives you minus six priority, and it lets you pivot out as if you're using your turn to volt switch. So basically, you can have your bulky Pokemon in your Clefable, your Slowbro, etc. Take the hit, be it a resisted attack or even a decently strong attack, but you're able to withstand that attack and then get that teleport off and then get your offensive Pokemon in or your Hazard Setter in safely without having to take that damage. It's a really amazing and practical tool in the metagame and been pretty controversial over the years. Um, with that said, though, I also just want to make a little announcement on the future of Metagame Mondays. So, in my server, my Discord server, and if you guys don't know what that is, then definitely check it out. But anyway, we had a poll basically saying um, what people wanted, be it Teleport and Pimping SSU, or winners and losers of potentially Gearna Band and SSU, because it's currently being suspected. And I just want to say that the latter won, but I'm doing the former first, because I noticed after putting the poll up that the timing of the latter makes much more sense to do once the Gearna Band is in place. So, assuming that next week the suspects will be happening, it, the vote still won't be done until later next week, but it's going to be perfect because we're going to get the video on the winners and losers potential ban up, and then it might get banned two or three days later. And it'll also just be in time for the OLT ladder, so a lot of you guys are going to have new things to try out. I'm going to have a lot of like different alternatives, different things in the metagame, kind of like the ripple effect, if you will. So I think it's just going to be really nice, and I also am going to have more time to work on a potential Magirna bans effect metagame video, and because of that, it's going to be even better. So definitely stay tuned for that. But yeah, let's get back into our topic. Alright, so just to go through a rundown of how we're going to be going through this, first off, um, if you guys could subscribe to the channel, it would mean the world to me. We're currently just short, short of 5,000 subscribers, and hitting that milestone would be great. I'm going to be announcing a completely new project once we get a little closer to 5,000, and I'm really excited about that. So again, if you guys could, you know, subscribe to the channel. Only about 55 to 60% of you that watch these videos actually are subscribed, and if that number could go reach, say, 65 to 70%, then that would mean the world to me. Because I know there are, like, you know, a thousand of you guys that are maybe just on the fence. And, you know, if we could, I could turn some of you guys, that'd be great. But, I mean, of course, you could do what you want to do. It's just not a huge commitment. But, yeah, no, it's totally your call. Anyway, I just thought I'd get that out there. But now, um, let's discuss how we're going to break this down. So, first off, we're going to discuss the Pokemon that are able to generate momentum through Teleport, U-Turn, Pulse Switch, and the new move Flip Turn, which is basically a 60 base power physical water type U-Turn clone, if you will. So we're going to discuss all those Pokemon that are viable in the SSU metagame that could use these moves. Then we're going to discuss potential partners for them. And also, after all that, I'm going to try and go through a sample replay of me abusing momentum with a Porygon Z. So, if you guys are excited to see the Porygon Z replay, well, A, check out my OU Live with Porygon Z from a couple weeks back. And B, on top of that, be sure to stay tuned all the way to the end, guys, because it's going to be a really fun conclusion to this metagame Monday. But with that said, of course, we do have to do our due diligence and go over the entirety of the Momentum metagame. And that will start first off with perhaps the most effective and controversial of the four Momentum generating moves, and that is Teleport. Again, Teleport gives you minus six priority and the ability to switch out, like you turn Volt Switch and Flip Turn, without doing damage. So, therefore, let me give you scenario A. I have my Clefable out against a Toxpex or a Slowbro. Okay, they're trying to click Scald or recover up because they took damage in the prior turn. I can go for Wish in the first turn and then Teleport in the second turn, and let's say I have a Cinderace at 18% or a Hydreigon at 24%. I don't want to risk switching them in, they could die. So I click Wish turn 1, I click Teleport turn 2, and no matter what they do, there's no way to stop them from letting me heal it up from 50% of Clefable's HP, which Clefable's HP with max HP is at 394. So that's giving you, say, 197 HP, I believe. That's well over half of Cinderace or even Hydreigon's HP because they don't invest in HP and they have lower base HP stats, Cinderace in particular. So given all of that, it's safe to say that this is an amazing strategy. And even if they go for a slower teleport, you could still heal up your Pokemon because if your teleport goes first, which it will often happen with Clefable against Slowbro, then the fact of the matter is that while they're going to gain momentum, they're going to be able to go to their Cinderace counter, Hydreigon counter you still gain the HP because once you teleport, you know they're also teleporting if they go slower. So therefore you can still proceed safely. There's no risk about it. And the fact that Wish Teleport is such a risk adverse strategy, and while you can take advantage of Clefable with opposing strong Pokemon like Cinderace, Exedril, Jirachi, Magirna, etc., it's also true in saying that Clefable's presence in the metagame is still a very good one. It's very durable. It's able to absorb status from things like the Aperange and Slowbro. Toxipex, even random toxics that you see on things like Powdon and Mandibuzz. 
Rotom Heat. And because of that, they could come in and nose Pokemon without having to risk the longevity of your offensive options and then teleport out without taking massive damage in the meantime. Therefore, not only is Sable arguably one of the better Pokemon in the metagame, if not one of the best Pokemon in the metagame, I'd say it's around number 4 or 5 right now, but once Magirna goes, it's only going to get much better in my eyes, and because of that, we might have to look into it alongside Toxpex in the future, as discussion of defensive Pokemon in a suspect context is something that's very important in my eyes, and something that we've been not necessarily giving the right, you know, looks and past. so... For those like three commenters under every single video, they're like, oh no, Finch only plays Stall, he uses Clefable and Toxpex, how cheap, that's no fun. Well, A, I haven't played a Stall team besides Dual Clef meme teams in my metal metagame in a long time. B, well, A, I'm one of the people that's trying to get those Pokemon like enough attention to where maybe we could suspect them in the future, so you're back up the wrong tree here, I'm on your side. and. See, you guys really need to learn what stall is because all the teams I use are basically balance or high profits. So yeah, um, but with that aside, just the fact of the matter is that McGinnis being banned actually might help this Pokemon, but that's more of a topic for the next metagame Monday when we're discussing the winners and losers of the potential McGinnis ban. So definitely stay tuned for next Monday. I believe that will be August the 3rd, which also is my best friend's birthday. So um Really happy for her but that that's aside the point um so i'm just thinking what i was going to say next um oh right uh so basically there are six pokemon that i view as quote unquote viable with teleport and those pokemon are going to be clefable slowbro blissey arcanine alakazam and zatu now the main four really the main three that are viable are going to be the first three and we're going to spend the majority of the time discussing them of course but let me just go through our canine, Alakazam, and Zatu first, because they might be more interesting options. You might not be too sure why you see them on your screen, so why the hell not? Go a little like flip-flop and say, okay, we're going to discuss these Pokemon first and foremost. The first one's going to be our canine. So, for those of you who don't know, our canine gained access to Teleport probably forever ago, but it was able to use it in particular this generation due to the new you know, mechanics surrounding it. And it actually makes it a decent pivot um, with Intimidate and Teleport with Wisp, it's just, oh, that's supposed to be Flamethrower, not Flame Charge. oops. That's a wrong, okay, I fixed that, but yeah, um, it makes it really cool, you can be able to check things like Cinderace, um, Magirna even, sort of, Rillaboom, Tangrowth, you know, you even soft check Zaraora, you can pivot in and out of Volcarona, I guess, if you're in Toxic or Flare Blitz, that helps a bit more with Volcarona, you can't even get burnt. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good, it has pretty good natu not natural bulk with 90, 80, 80 defenses and Intimidate. I mean, Intimidate makes that physical bulk so much more practical. And the fact that it can now run heavy duty boots to negate the Stealth Rock weakness makes Defensive Arcanine a once kind of meme Pokemon in OU that was there solely for checking things like Zard Y or Mega Mawa in past generations. Now has a completely different place on bulkier teams, more stallier teams, honestly, than that. And the mono fire tapping with boots actually becomes a bit more practical defensively just because the fire resistance, the fire resistance, the bug resistance, the um, grass resistance, yeah, and those are all relatively common attacking types. And will o -Wisp is obviously great because you have to cripple things like incoming Toxic Specs of Powdown Slowbro, although Toxic is a good alternative if you don't mind uh, not being able to do much against Toxic, just teleporting out as it comes in. Flamethrower can be used to deal damage. However, if you don't mind taking a little recoil and doing a lot more damage as you have 10 more base attack and Flare Blitz is a lot more strong, a lot stronger rather, um, then Flare Blitz is a viable option as well. And Morning Sun is its means of recovery. Overall, it's more of a fringe option than not. I'd say it's like kind of a C, C plus tier Pokemon, but it definitely has some viability and it's done really well against my hyper offense teams. Um, I struggled with it on numerous occasions on the ladder and I just find that really funny. But yeah, Teleport Arcanine in my eyes is a viable Pokemon, but I wouldn't call it a particularly good one. I definitely would proceed with caution when trying to use it, but I'd still try it nonetheless just because it seems pretty fun. Next up we have Teleport Alkazam and a bit of a mandatory soft plug here. I used Teleport Alkazam in Alive and it did really well. A lot of people are like, wait, that defeats the purpose of using Alkazam, but think about it here. You come in safely on something like Toxpex or even Chansey that likes Thunder Wave because you can just size, you recover off seismic health damage. Chansey is not an answer to Alakazam. Or, you know, other weaker attackers like Amoongus, you know, etc. And you're like, okay, I now threaten these Pokemon either with Nasty Plot in the long haul or with my psychic just nuking those poison types. And then I'm like, okay, but wait, they have an Assault Vest Magirna, a Special Defensive Mandibus, a Thunder Wave Blissey. You know, the list goes on. A specially defensive knockoff or Thunder Wave, Clefable. A faster Pokemon that I don't want to 1v1. 
Oh god, I just have to do this. But yeah, no, no big deal. Um, anyway, what I'm trying to say is, you can predict them to come in, and you can teleport. So if they stay in, predicting you to nasty plot or whatever, you can absorb their weak special attacks, and you can get momentum anyway. But, 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 if you get the turn right, and they go to the Pokemon, that not only can you not break in one hit or through one turn, but also that threaten you. Sorry, we got a phone call. I had to take a look quickly. But anyway, as I was saying, basically, you take advantage of the Pokemon that Alakazam can kind of be checked by by teleporting. And then you pair it. Let's say you're scared, especially if it's a Mandibuzz. Okay, go ahead and pair it with a Specs Magirna and take advantage of that. You're scared of a Thunder Wave Blitzy. Okay, go ahead and pair it with, again, Trick Magirna could work, but also something like Cinderace or Conqueror or Trackgun would be great. Okay, you're scared of them being able to live your hits because you haven't had any hazard chip on them. Okay, pair it with a Stealth Rock Pokemon like Kipowdon with Toxic or Hyperion with Sword Dance to drown out most Defoggers. And it just synergizes super nicely with these Pokemon. And I think it's underrated. I still think Nasty Plot's a better set, but it's a viable teleport user as well. And I definitely wanted to give it a little mention in this video because it can really generate momentum that way. Next up, we have Zatu. I don't actually really have much experience using Zatu. Um, I, I think some viable moves on it are going to be Nightshade, Psychic, Heat Wave, Thunder Wave, Toxic, all on top of Roost and Teleport that are mandatory. As for items, you could run Boots, you could run Heavy, you could run Boots, you could run uh, Rocky Helmet, you could even run Trick and then give the item uh, Choice Band or Choice Scarf or Choice Specs or whatever it might be. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things you can do with Zatu, but it's underexplored. You know what? If you guys have used Zatu before, let me know your favorite set in the comments below. I'd love to hear that and maybe even try it out my own at some point in the future. So definitely stay tuned for that, my guys. But anyway, now we've been able to go through the sort of three headless horsemen, the three sort of, you know, fringe teleporters. So now we can shift our focus to the premier teleporters in the SSU metagame. The first of that would be Clefable. Clefable is pretty cool in the metagame right now. Um, it, it's been a lot better than it has now been previously. For example, in a little history lesson here, in the pre-DLC metagame, Clefable was seen as one of the better Pokemon, as in literally the best Pokemon, I don't know why I said one of the better. It was literally number one Pokemon in usage by 30%. Like, Clefable was the metagame. You were using Clefable on 8 or 9 out of 10 teams most of the time. And there was no going around it. And most of that usage was the Wishport set. Obviously, Combine sets were solid. Knockoff, you know, Utility sets were solid. Stealth Rock was okay. Even Trick sets, you know, more just came up with during SPL. And they were alright too. But, 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 the fact of the matter is that this set was far and away the most common set. And I don't want to say like the single best set, but it was really good. And that was because it was able to generate momentum for more offensive kind of progress makers. Pokemon that we're going to discuss later that I'm going to label as Momentum Abusers. And again, let's just go through the sample scenarios. You come in on Tox Specs, you don't want to risk taking a Scald Burn or a Toxic status on your bulky Pokemon. You're okay taking a status on your unaware, on, on your Magic Guard Pokemon. No, not unaware, oh my god. A Magic Guard Pokemon, because the worst thing that's going to happen is just going to boost Dragapult or Gengar's Hex. Like, okay, no big deal. Woo -woo. So, because of that, all of a sudden you're like, oh crap, this is actually really good. I could bring it in and then I could teleport out and I could bring in my Tox Specs abuser, something like Alakazam or Subvolcarona or, you know, Zen Headbutt Cinderace if they're weakened and, you know, not Painful Bunker. You know, the list goes on and on and on. Rillaboom, you know, Sub Combine McGearn, etc. So the fact of the matter is, there's really not a ton of reason not to switch to teleport to Fable in the prior metagame. And now in the current metagame, while there's a lot more things to abuse it, like a Shifu negating, through, going through a Protect, or Volcarona setting up all over it, or the aforementioned Magirna sets, there's still a lot of reasons to use it. Even if, if those things are extra, there are, there are a whole slew of Pokemon that are common that abuse the crap out of Clefable, and despite that, it's still the premier status absorber and teleport. It's just, just a testament to how good of a Pokemon it is. And honestly, it might, it might, 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 might just be broken in some capacities, or even more unhealthy than broken, but... We're definitely discussing that, and I actually do want to hear your thoughts in the comments on not only Clefable, but also the move Teleport, so let me know that in the comments below as well. But, with that said, obviously it's just a great option. You're able to heal up Pokemon that otherwise were just never healing up, the Cinderaces, Hydreigons of the world, especially if your Hydreigon likes Roost. And getting them healed up when they already took a lot of damage, trying to, they probably got, got a kill taking all that damage, because they're just that good offensively. So all of a sudden you're like, okay, now they get another kill. And every time I can't stop Clefable coming in repeatedly because I got my Toxics, I got my Apowdon, I got my, you know, own Clefable, etc. 
and all of a sudden, Wishport to Fable is just giving you so many legs up in the battle, and it's like, shit, like, I cannot play this man, but at the end of the day, he doesn't have to take many risks. He gets his offensive Pokemon in, thanks to Wish and Teleport, and it's like, crap, here we go again, and there's nothing I can do. And that element not only kind of works team building in a certain way, but also means that we have to play with a certain level of aggression. That means that we're going to be have to accepting a certain level of risk on a consistent basis that they simply are not going to. So you've got to go above and beyond if you're not using the right, you know, countermeasures. And that makes unprepared teams really struggle in the metagame right now for not only offensive threats, but also defensive and utility threats like this, which makes team building a bit more complicated. I actually enjoy that challenge of it, but a lot of people struggle with it. And personally, I can totally see why it's challenging and why it's off-putting and definitely why we need to continue to work on the state of the metagame. But yeah, Teleport Clefable is a super polarizing Pokemon right now. And on top of that, also just, you know, I don't want to say it ruins things, but it definitely makes things harder to win in the short haul. And it also enables more longer offensive play in games while being until the option itself. So yeah, it's kind of the new age of pivoting. Next up, we have Slowbro, which has risen to popularity ever since it got Teleport. And by that, I mean upon release in DLC because it got Teleport forever, but it finally has been released this generation with DLC in, uh, I believe, June. Yeah, so Scald, it can run Future Sight or potentially Thunder Wave. Either is fine. But with that said, the main drawbacks of it is that, of course, it can take status and Scald Burns, and in a way, it actually is sort of a pseudo-status absorber, but you can only be in for a so limited number of turns, so you're going to be just coming in and teleporting out a ton, but the invention of Heavy Duty Boots enables that a ton. Also, the fact that it risks, you know, you can Scald Burn a lot of things, or Future Sight to force specific switches, those combinations are just super synergetic, and like I said, Slubber is a great partner to offensive Pokemon that prefer teleport as well. However, it does like Wish or the ability to heal teammates like Clefable, so you got to be careful there. Oftentimes pairing with Grassy Terrain can help a little bit with this, but also I really like pairing it with Urshifu because you Future Sight turn 1, Teleport turn 2, and you bring in your Shifu and you're like, okay, I can't bring in my Toxpex or Amoongus to pivot in and scout it. All of a sudden those Regenerator cores are completely like destroyed by Future Sight, so therefore it, it gives you more of a path to close combat, predicting, say, a Mandibuzz or another Dark type to come in and take that Future Sight, and then you're going to be 2 killing or one-shotting all of those Pokemon, and that's just crazy good. And because of that, Slowbro plus Shifu cores are balanced, even both the offensive teams are mad underrated in my, opinion, uh, my opinion, and you should definitely try them out as well. But with that said, another Pokemon that is worth discussing here in this context is going to be Blissey. Blissey, um, with the invention of Heavy Duty Boots, again, does really, really nicely with Teleport. Seismic Toss, Soft Blow, Toxic Teleport. Could also run Thunder Wave over Toxic, or even Thunder Wave over Teleport if you like kind of negating opposing passive play and just punishing them with status. That's cool, you know. But this is a video on Teleport, so we're focusing on Teleport variants. So, uh, yeah, it's really great at coming in, being a special sponge, so long as you don't get tricked by Magirna. And just repeatedly applying pressure on the opposing team. And I think that's great, honestly. So, yeah, definitely let me know what you think of Teleport Blissey kind of overtaking Chansey as the main blob in the metagame. Of course, both are still viable, but Blissey is definitely seeing more usage. And it's far and away more common on non stall teams. It works on balance teams especially. So, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Let me know what you think as well. But now that we've gone through Teleporters, we're also going to go through some other Pokemon that generate momentum in the metagame as well. So as you can see now, we're looking at the others, U-Turners, I've got 12 U-Turners actually, and Volt Switchers and Flip Turners, so let's go to U-Turn first, because it's been the move that's been around the longest, that has the greatest distribution in the metagame, and yeah, so the best U-Turners are going to be Cinderace, Dragapult, Mandibuzz, Rillaboom, Urshifu, Single Strike, and Corviknight in my opinion. You could definitely make an argument for the other six that we're going to get to momentarily, but let's go through these first and foremost. The first one being Cinderace. So, for those of you who don't know, Cinderace now has access to this ability called Libero, which is basically a protein clone, and it is really good. Honestly, I'd vote ban on Cinderace right now. It's just that effective. With the ability to have coverage moves such as Pyro Ball, Gunk Shot, and Headbutt, and U-Turn, it's able to really negate any and all checks and counterplay. For instance, say you face something like a physically defensive Mandibuzz or a Groudon. You U-turn once or twice, and then all of a sudden they're into a carry for Pyro Ball or Gunk Shot in Mandibuzz's case. So that's super helpful. In addition, you can Zen Headbutt Toxics and you can two kill physically defensive variants if you're an adamant nature, which is really helpful as well. And going a bit deeper, things like Slowbro, not a check at all. Gunk Shot's doing 39 to like 43 percent something like that u-turn is doing near half damage you can't keep up with that it's gonna be out damaging your generator consistently and put you on the back foot so much and because of that cinderace is just mad good right now obviously there's certain barriers entries such as it's pretty fragile overall but 
is able to generate momentum with U-turn repeatedly on those Pokemon like Hippowdon and Mandibuzz and Slowbro that I just mentioned. And then you could go to your Pokemon like the Dragapult or the Spex Magearna to threaten all of them and or Urshifu. And you're like, oh crap, now I can't really win the game. Because now all of a sudden, not only have I been put in a corner by Cinderace, I'm weaker to Cinderace, but also now these breakers are in. And those sort of offensive cores do so nicely on balance in bulky offensive teams right now. They really open up the game and kind of avoid incoming passivity, if you will. And that's because, and that's why I thought this video was such a great idea, because a lot of you guys are worried about, you know, breaking stall teams. And I already did a video on how to break stall teams. Definitely check out Metagame Monday for that. The other Metagame Monday for that. But also, how to break these balance teams. And... One of the key elements of doing so is establishing your own momentum, kind of conforming to their teleport U-turn games and saying, okay, I'm going to find a way out because using singular breakers to break those teams is not possible. No, it's got to be a team kind of effort. You don't want to just have it boil down to how one breaker matches up. No, 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 no. You want to kind of chip them down turn by turn systematically over the course of the game, and then you should be able to do it. So I hope that kind of clears that little misconception and notion up there. Anyway, we also have Dragapult. Um, Running heavy duty boots a lot more just to take toxic spikes and south rock and spikes, you know, without worrying. Pivot a ton in and out. Of course, you could also run specs or spell tag or leftovers or whatever the hell you want to do, honestly. But yeah, I, I like the Draco. Hex will as you turn set. You can use Thunder Wave over Wisp. You can use Dragon Darts over Draco with attack investment, etc. But yeah, U turn is a really sound option on these sets as well. Um, but it's able to generate momentum nicely. It's able to lower in things like the Fable, Toxapex, Mandibuzz, and you can take advantage of those in however fast or whatever fashion you wish. I definitely something to keep in mind when you're building teams for sure. Anyway, next up we have Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz with Foul Play, Roost, U-Turn, and Defog. Um, this is just a sample spread that lets you outrun things like Choice Band Tyranitar, Max Speed Aegis Slash, Primarina, um, all Adamant Crawdon, you know, this goes on. And foul play for Swords Dance Extra Drill and you pimp out the physical defense. Of course, you can run a uh, zero speed set with taking out a couple of speed IVs to get a slower U-turn than opposing Mandibuzz and be slower than all those Pokemon as well. You just got to be careful there. You can also run a faster spread to outrun things like Bisharp as well. So, you know, pick your battles, I guess. Do what you want to do. Um, U-turn's not mandatory on Mandibuzz. You can run knockoff, foul play, toxic, brave bird, taunt, etc. But U-turn's a great option if you pair it with specific offensive Pokemon and you don't need one of those other moves like toxic and... It definitely opens up teams with Mandibuzz that are balanced about the offense as well. Next up, we have one of the better momentum generators in the tier in my eyes, that's Rillaboom. It's able to lure in things like Mandibuzz, Moongus, Ferrothorn, Corviknight consistently and go for U-turn. And I think it's going to pair really nicely with something like Specs Analytic Magnezone or even Magnapal Magnezone once Magirna goes and opens up a spot for that. But again, that's more of a discussion for next video. In the meantime, I'd say that Choice Band or even Swords Dance plus U-turn Rillaboom is great in the metagame, and I'm sorry if you guys hear my dog going berserk upstairs. He definitely like sees a squirrel outside or something. Hey, Sammy! Shh. But um, anyway, with that said, uh, it's pretty cool seeing Rillaboom have as much effectiveness as it does in the current metagame. Grassy Surge is a godsend for it, as well as Grassy Glide, helping it make a lot of progress right now. So that's great. This is just an EV spread I run to outrun Max plus Magirna, I believe it might uh, yeah, I think so. It's 251. You also get the jump on Bisharp, so you can grab about for a sucker punch, or if it's not a plus two, you could whack it with a wood hammer with ease, and most stuff like Como Wall, Mandibuzz, so if there's no state defensive, you can do it after a little chip. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, again, other Pokemon, such as Crodont, Modest Magirna, Tyranitar of any variety. Yeah, you could outrun them. Aegislash of any variety, yeah, so Prima Reno too. Yes, it's all nice to have this speed. And then the ball lets you live a spec Shadow Ball from Aegis Slash and a hit from Dracos of Dragapult. Dracos of Drag Dragapult Dracos. Not like dropping Dracos. What am I saying? Anyway, another one is her Shifu. If you're not really sure what to predict, you can always go for the U-turn and chip the certain counterplay. And then later on in the game, it, puts, it makes it easier to cure them, even with resisted Wicked Blow. So that is helpful too. And you could also, you know. Once you're lowering the Clefable, or the Mandibuzz, or the Toxpex, or the Powdon, or the Tangrowth, whatever it might be that's fitting into you, you could definitely take advantage of it from there. So that is really cool. And next up, we have Corviknight, which, you know, it's just a Defogger with Body Press for Drill, and Bisharp, etc. And you just take advantage of the things you lower in, like Toxpex, Clefable, Rotom Heat, Zero Aura, Volcarona with U-Turn, and then go into your certain Pokemon that can take advantage of that, and you could also Defog White Hazard. So it's kind of an all-purpose pivot, if you will. But these are not the only U-Turners in the metagame. In fact, I have a fresh batch of six more that we're going to bring out to you here. U-Turners 2.0. First one's the one that I don't love too much, and that is Scarf Hydreigon. 
Um, it does use U-Turn. I don't really like it right now. It's only really good against Hyper Offense. It struggles to break balance a ton, but it is a viable Pokemon nonetheless, so definitely try that out. Um, next up, we have Pelipper and Scizor, two Pokemon that are really specific to certain archetypes. Scizor is really going to only fit on very specific balance and bulky offense teams right now when it's running the Choice Band U-Turn variant, whereas Pelipper, of course, is specific to Rain. Both of them can generate momentum. Scizor's U-Turn is obviously much, much stronger than that of Pelipper, probably like three or four times stronger, honestly, and that's not even including Stab and a Choice Band boost. So yeah, um, it's going to do a lot of damage with U-Turn as well, whereas Pelipper is just you know, using U-Turn to pivot against Tox Specs and Slowbro and shit that it lures in, so yeah. Um, you could also drop Skull for Hurricane on that set. And, hey, it's about physical defense, but you can use special defense to help take things like Move Blast easier on Palper. Um, again, in Scizor, I prefer Bulk just because the speed tiers it hits are a big deal, but you can max that speed if you want. Um, anyway, you could also run special defense to Scizor, I suppose. But as for the other three, Urshifu Rapid Strike. Um, oh, I didn't finish up this set. Oops. Nice. Yeah, that's fine. Urshifu Rapid Strike. Um, it's not really great compared to regular Urshifu, but. On rain teams and very particular balance teams, I suppose it can work as well. Um, I prefer this on the choice band set just because locking the Zen head with a Thunder Punch for Tox Specs and Slowbro isn't great, so I'd rather just U turn out and abuse them. But I mean, you do you. It actually works pretty nicely with Future Sight, admit admittedly, but the issue is that pairing it with Slowbro means you got two water types that exasperate some weaknesses, you know, makes it pretty awkward. So definitely be careful there. Um, but it still hits pretty hard. I mean, 130 attack and surging strikes and close combat are mad strong, so yeah. Next up, we have Jirachi, which is pretty cool. Choice Scarfer, you can run Trick, you can run Healing Wish or Wish in the last spot and just, you know, help you heal up a teammate or multiple teammates, depending on if it's Wish or Healing Wish. And yeah, I mean, it, the EVs here live to Dracos from Terram, I believe. Uh, you can just max out attack if you want, though. It's cool being an anti-fable measure that can trick a wall like Corviknight or Mandibuzz or Powdown or even Slowbro. I guess Toxics as well, if you don't mind acquiring Black Sludge temporarily, but... Yeah, no, I definitely would recommend trying out Jirachi in the metagame if you want to generate momentum. It's really cool coming to get an app. It does especially well in the hyper offensive matchup. Next up, we have their Manitan, which, you know, it's just kind of a fringe pick on some teams. I figured I'd include it just because you're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel if you're in number 12 U-turn or in a tier because there just aren't a ton of Pokemon that use U-turn right now. But yeah, the Manitan is viable and one of them as well. So these are the viable U-turners in the metagame. They can all generate momentum in their own way that I kind of outlined when I went through them. Next up, we have Volt Switch. So the big one, obviously, is going to be Choice Specs Magirna with Flare Cannon, Flash Cannon, Shrick, or Aura Sphere, and Volt Switch. It's able to lure in things like Tox Specs and chip them down, or Amoongus and chip them down. It works really well with things like Cinderace because Cinderace is going to be able to kill Tox Specs after the Volt Switch damage from Specs, or Amoongus just from very high levels of health despite taking a resistant Volt Switch. So yeah, I think that's amazing. It also kind of mandates us using X Drill and Power Down right here as much as we do to have a Volt Switch immunity because really every team needs something to punish Volt Switch in my eyes when Specs Magirna is in this year, so... Yeah, that's pretty vital. Uh, and honestly, it's just one of the best catalysts. Even if you have something that walls, flash cannon plus flare cannon, and doesn't mind taking a trick, Volt Switch can just generate momentum on all of them. It makes Magirna a pretty foolproof and dumb Pokemon, and one of the primary reasons as to why I believe it's broken. Next up, we have Zero Aura. Zero Aura has been running Volt Switch more and more ever since Among Us Tangrowth dropped into the tier, and the uh, Seismitoad infestation dropped when, we, when Drake Fish got banned. Basically, Volt Switch on Zero Aura. Is really helpful because it takes advantage of those Pokemon being able to tempor temporarily wall it. And it enables us to get in things like Cinderace, which again abuses both of its grass types being brought in. And on top of that, just synergizing super nicely with Zero as an offensive core. Yeah, I, I quite like those teams. It also works well with things like Rotom Heat and Alakazam, which can take advantage of those Pokemon too, which I suppose is worth noting as well. All in all, I think that this is like the best Magirna has been in the post DLC metagame just because people are finally using the Volt Switch sets. And I think those sets are really underrated. You can even run a special one with Thunderbolt, Combine, slash Focus Blast, slash Grass Knot times two, and Volt Switch as well. So yeah, I definitely would try those out as well. All in all, Zero is a pretty great Pokemon right now. I'd say it's like top 10 to 12 in the metagame, and it is one of the premier Volt Switch users alongside Magirna. Next up, we have Rotom Heat. Now, personally, I prefer Discharge over Volt Switch on Rotom Heat, but Rotom Heat is so common, and Volt Switch is still used on a fair amount of them, so I can't really debate the fact that it is a viable option. It's just you know, not like super, just okay, just okay. But um, yeah, I, again, I like Nasty Plot plus Discharge just because you're not forced out, but if you don't mind Volt Switching into things like Tox Specs, uh, Slowbro, Mandibuzz, etc., then you do you, you know, it definitely is viable, so yeah. But with that said, it could also run Pivot Sets with Defog, Pain Split, you know, I just, I've been using Toxic a bit more lately, so I figured I'd highlight that. And yeah, you can also run bulk of your spreads, especially if you pair it with things like Zara Aura or Jirachi 
where even Scarf Maguna that are able to handle things like Togekiss. It's just right now, you want to somehow run Togekiss and be able to heat deal with it. So Rotom Heat teams tend to rely on Rotom Heat to do that. Again, it really depends on your team as to what you want to do with the spread. So yeah. Next up, we have Magnezone, which with the choice specs and in my eyes, Analytic is going to be like Maguna 2.0 in the metagame. It won't be as good. It won't be broken, but it'll be really good. Um, specs, Magnezone is just mad really good with analytic it's so strong i definitely would recommend trying this out i view it as really underrated right now i didn't include it in the underrated pokemon video because it is ou by usage but analytic itself is used very much no i definitely would recommend trying this out though it's so good if you get a flash cannon into the ground type forget about it i mean impadon's dying extra's taking 70 percent still you can even kill drill after stealth rock which is crazy and yeah i mean obviously the electric moves are gonna do a ton as well um bulky waters get nuked you know corvinite takes a million same with Mandibuzz. So yeah, that's helpful. Next up, we have Rotom Wash, kind of the forgotten Rotom form of this generation, which is ironic considering how effective it was in prior generations. But with that said, it's definitely seen better days. No, you heavy duty boots Rotom Heat has largely taken its place, unfortunately, as well as other bulky waters such as Toxpex and the aforementioned Slowbro. So yeah, it still can run a bulky um, set with Volt Switch's Pivot, run Nasty Plot, or Thunder Wave, or Willis, whatever you want to run with it. I guess it's fine. And yeah, I mean, you can do a couple things with it. I personally don't love Rotomosh right now, but I mean, if you got to use it, you got to use it. I don't really think it's awful. So yeah, why not? Anyway, next up we have Toxtricity with Choice Specs. Personally, I prefer to shift gear sets and I brought fence, but it is another viable Volt Switcher and Volt Switcher's distribution isn't amazing. I wasn't trying to include something like Cobalion, which you've never seen the metagame. So why not include Toxtricity? Yeah, it's all right with Volt Switch and Choice Specs. It's really, really strong. Specs Boom Burst and Overdrive damage i swear to god but again it's not great i definitely would prefer one of the first like three or four volt switchers over these two but they can work in the metagame and i figured they were worth highlighting as well because of that so yeah anyway next up we're gonna have flip turners in the metagame so for those who don't know there are a certain number of pokemon that can use flip turn in the ss in the metagame um, flip turn is a new move that basically functions as a water type u-turn on the physical side with only 60 base power um, one of the best users of that is going to be Kingdra, in particular on rain teams using the choice specs. So you pair it with your Pelipper, and let's say you're expecting Tox specs or Ferrothorn. You go for Flip Turn, and then you bring in your Pokemon that's able to abuse them. And then otherwise, against Pokemon, you could just outright nuke. You could just go for your Brain Boosted Hydro Pump or Surf, or your Draco Meteor if they're water resistant. And that'll go a long way. See so yeah, Flip Turn not only enables you to mitigate potential defensive counter play, but also go for Minigans if you aren't sure what they're going to go to as well, and get in your more appropriate breaker for that situation and i think that makes kingdra a much more dynamic pokemon and an option on rain teams as well so yeah next up we have primarino which unfortunately has fallen out of favor in OU a bit sub combined with surging in the pre-dlc metagame but with that said specs with flip turn is still pretty cool it's able to let it so that you can't like be hard walled by chancy and blitzing a mungus in the long term although you psychic crap out of a mungus anyway excuse me but yeah no flip turn is really cool for chipping those pokemon and bringing in your synergistic Physical Offense Pokemon or Hazard Setter, which can take advantage of the position itself. Next up, we have Barascudo, which really, really, really appreciates Flip Turn. If it wasn't UU, I definitely would put it up higher on this list, but yeah, I think on Rain Team, the Choice Band Barascudo is really superb. Again, this specific to Rain Team, but with that said, Liquidation and Rain is mad strong, especially coming off of a nice 123 special a physical attack. Oh, excuse me, physical attack. And on top of that, with the 136 base speed, you don't even need to run plus nature anymore, especially with Swiss Swim, so. Yeah, close combat for Falathorn and other Pokemon, like, say, Gastrodon, Yukitukyo. Uh, Psyche Fang specifically for Tox Specs, and I guess random things like Tox Cook as well, because why not? And Flip Tenor General Momentum, if you're not sure what to predict and you still want to do some damage, it's just really helpful in this Pokemon as well. So, yeah, unfortunately, still walled by Tengrowth, but it is what it is, really. Next up, we have Keldeo, which can run a Choice Scarf set. It's not really common right now, but with Stone Edge, you could Revenge Total Corona. Flip Turn allows you to come in on things like Tox Specs and Slowbro and General Momentum. And yeah, Surf Sacred Sword. I mean, it's not really, it's pretty pedestrian, it's pretty weak, but it's still cool. It's one of the few saving graces for Keldeo and OU right now, is it's really just a UU Pokemon this generation, unfortunately. We have Vaporeon and Milotic, two Pokemon that the latter like using is kind of bulky waters that can all pivot. I think both are inferior to Slowbro as pivot and Tox Specs defensively, but again, both are viable. The Mono, um, the Mono Water Typing at least lets you so that you turn your Zen Head, but from Cinderace can't eat you super effectively, but you also lose other crucial resistances that Psychic on Slowbro and Poison on Toxpex enable, so it's kind of a trade-off and I don't view it as worthwhile, but hey, if you want to go with it, you want to go with it, it's fine. These are two sample sets for them. Definitely try them out. They can flip turn through the metagame, which is cool. They definitely serve some purpose. They're not awful, but again, I just view them mostly outclassed on most teams. So yeah, 
Now we've been through all of the Pokemon that can generate momentum. Six teleport users, 12 U-turn users, six volt switchers, and six flip turners. Before we go on to the next part of the video, I just want to say, if you guys are enjoying this video, be sure to like and let me know your favorite parts in the comments below. And also, let me know your favorite Pokemon that generates momentum, be it a teleport, U-turn, volt switch, or a flip turn Pokemon. I would love to hear that from y'all, so definitely let me know. Anyway, now we're going to go ahead and go through some Pokemon that abuse the momentum that is presented from teleport, U-turn, flip turn, volt switch, etc. So, first off, we have Alakazam. It's pretty frail, so it should be self-explanatory. You bring it in, off one of those things, and you just kind of do as much damage as you can, you know. No rocket science here. Same goes for Crawdon, which I think is a super underrated Pokemon in the metagame right now. But I really would not use Crowdon without teleport support right now. It almost definitely needs that. People like Marco P or Gilbert Arenas on the forums use the team I built for him with teleport for Fable in the Crowdon World Cup, and he was able to emerge victorious. So that was pretty dope. Uh, oh, it should be Adam. Oh, these natures are not here. What the hell happened to my natures? Yo. Give me that Adam in here. Give me that Adam in here. Are these natures here. All right, this is here. Nah, give me that uh, Adam in on both of Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this one should be modest. All right, that has that. So yeah, um... But Alex Dam's a great one. Crowdon's a great one. Cinderace, it generates momentum itself, but also it likes the help of teleport or U-turn or volt switches to get it in safely. Again, I mentioned it pairs really nicely with Specs Magirina because of that dynamic where it lures in those poison types trying to take flash flare cannons. And you volt switch into packs, put it into that headbutt range, volt switch on Amoongus, put it in powerball range. It's just a really helpful interaction there. Uh, yeah, so not only does it generate momentum, but also abuses momentum. Same goes for our Dragon, except it really abuses it more with the Nasty Clap set, whereas it generates it more with the Scarf set, so. Totally different purposes both sets serve, but yeah, seeing as it's not the most durable Pokemon, it has some nice natural bulk, you can really appreciate it if you're able to come in on something like a, you know, a Slowbro or a non-toxic slash U-turn Mandibuzz and take advantage of that momentum and get a nasty put up for free. And if you're able to, you know, Volt Switch or U-turn and teleport on those Pokemon, it's great. And those are really common interactions. So yeah, next up we have Rashifu's bulk up set, which love being paired with Wish Teleport or just, you know, any momentum, as well as some of the Crippled Clefable. Those teams are really effective in my eyes. I definitely would try out Bulk Up or Shifu. It's a great abuser of momentum, and it just stretches their regenerative of course with, like, Tox, 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 and Buzz, as long as they don't have a physical defensive Clefable. And last but not least, we also have Volcarona, a Pokemon that is pretty frail on the physical side and can abuse the presence of momentum just to get it in safely to start and set up a sweep. So, yeah, I think that's pretty cool as well. But with that said, there are some other Pokemon that are able to abuse momentum as well. These Pokemon are a bit more fringe, and I don't want to belabor the point, so I'm just going to go through them. Gengar, Nasty Plot Set, you know, it's pretty frail. Conglair wants that play more activated and isn't the most bulky. Why are my natures not here? No! Um, but yeah, Conglair's a great one. Diggers, but you know, it's not the most durable Pokemon, and super strong, so get it in safely and good things will happen. And then fringe options like Haxorus, Porygon Z, and also, on top of that, Marowak Lola, which, you know, I didn't even bother filling in a set in, just Marowak's pretty much dropped off to face the metagame right now. You can use it like Stealth Rock, Flare Blitz, Poltergeist, Boomerang, Slash Earthquake, you can use Sword Snatch, you can use Sub, you can even use Focus Punch to punish Mandibuzz in the Roost, so, you know, definitely a lot of options there, but I wouldn't try it out right now just because it's not really great defensively. Super simple little trick and knockoff that are as common as ever, and it's just too slow, so. Yeah, it really, Pokemon to Thrive needs to either be fast or bulky, and it has neither of those things going for it, unfortunately, so. It can only deal out damage, and because of that, it requires way too much support, and it limits team building a ton. And because of that, I don't love Marowak, but it is a great abuser of teleport, and you turn to both switch with that set. So yeah, um, there's also one other type of Pokemon that abuses it, and these are hazard setters. Basically, I label this as positional or positioning advantages, because you want to maybe not break with your Urshifu, or your Porygon Z, or your Magirna, or your Volcarona, or your Cinderace early on in the game, because they're not ready to break through, but once you get hazards up, then you're able to take advantage of things being weakened and worn down over time. And because of that, you find a lot of openings. So things like Stealth Rock Exodrill, Stealth Rock Farathorn, Stealth Rock Homo, Stealth Rock Capowdon, Stealth Rock Chansey, Stealth Rock Fable are all great partners for that. I don't want to belabor the point again because A, we're closer to the 40 minute mark, and B, much more importantly, these Pokemon fit on your teams regardless. They don't really necessarily need or necessitate momentum, but they are great partners, and hazards are one of the main reasons why teleport momentum sequences are great, and also why heavy duty boost is so common. But anyway, now we've went through all of the like main components of momentum, how you generate it and how you abuse it. Let me know if you have any questions below. I'd love to help you guys out. Or if you have any teams you want me to look into that involve momentum, because again, I'm here to help you guys out. I love being a resource. I love seeing you guys improve. It really warms my heart hearing stories about you know you guys sitting 14, 15, 16, 17, etc. 100 on the ladder for the first time ever with my assistance. So let me know what I can do for y'all for sure. 
Anyway, now we're going to go ahead and proceed to a sample game showcasing how great momentum is in the metagame. It's actually a game that you might be familiar with if you watch my Porygon G Live, but definitely stay tuned for it regardless of that. Alright, so here's one of my laddering games for an OU Live I recorded a couple weeks back on July 7th, for those of you who don't know. So it isn't a post-DLC metagame, but it's not super recent. But anyway, for those of you who don't remember, I was using a Choice Specs Portagon Z team, and I really want to showcase it off, so I paired it with a Yawn plus Top Horse Slowbro, a U-Turn Rillaboom, and a U-Turn Cinderace. And here's what happened in this game against Stanish Lord. I was using a pretty standard team with Exodrill, Cinderace, Rotom Heat, Togekiss, Slowbro, and Mandibuzz. So again, nothing out of the ordinary, but here's what happened. So, he leads Cinderace. I lead Porygon team like, oh crap, I don't want to get, you know, hit in the face with a high jump kick, so I get the hell out of there, go with my slow bro. I'm like, okay, bat, bat, bat. He goes knockoff, that's fine with me. I just go for the Scald, I'm hoping to get a burn, I put it in tri-attack range, I don't get that, that's fine, no big deal, no big deal. Now he goes slow bro on another Scald, I'm like, okay, that's fine with me. He's at 85, I go Clefable, just trying to get my, you know, maybe Hazards up, or, yeah, I got Hazards up because it's Spin Drill, Rock stuff on this team. All right, so now Hazards up, that's like the big thing, but he goes Drill, okay. No big deal. Drill doesn't get my slow bro or real boom, so I just go out to slow bro. Yeah, he goes spin. That's fine. No big deal. We're just playing that long game. He goes future side before, and that takes me for 21%, but again, that's fine. He goes slow bro now, and I'm like, okay, I want to get that skull burn. I want to put it in Porygon Z range. I finally get the burn. I'm like, oh, that's perfect. You might go for a future side again here. He actually teleports. I'm like, okay, but I went for the slower teleport, so that's fine. I gotta get my Cinderace in on his Cinderace. Let's chill with me. He goes slow bro here, and I know I could live any one hit, so I just go gong shot, just trying to knock him out or do a lot of damage. So I'm adamant. That's fine, it shifts to slow bro here. Now I go U-turn here, and I know it's gonna leave him really low, and even if he slacks off, he's gonna be in Porygon Z range, so I get my Porygon Z in. He just goes to Scald, too. And thankfully he doesn't burn, so I'm at 60% here, and now I can go for a Tri-Attack. And look, U-turn getting in Porygon Z once, Tri-Attack does 65% of that drill. So that's already one example of momentum just being generated from my Breaker there, okay. Now I go slow bro here, he goes Rocks here, knowing he's gonna threaten me out with Earthquake potentially killing me. So he goes back to his slow bro, and I go Teleport, and I'm like, okay, instant number two. And now all of a sudden, his normal is just weakened. So momentum is really helping us a ton. He goes extra here, I take it out, and now not only is his normal is just gone, but his stealth rocker is gone, so I could just get a spin off, and then I could bring Porygon Z in without consequence. But he goes through his Cinderace, I don't want to risk taking a U-turn with the slow bro, so I just got my Cinderace here, he powerballs twice, does 47, I U-turn here, okay, that's fine. I just want to get my slow bro in back here now, so I can threaten it out, and potentially go for a teleport here. He goes to his own slow bro, I'm like, okay, bet. I get that poor gun to the again, he's still in range, and now it's the third time that teleporter U-turn has helped me get this in. He goes Tokus here, but you can get the hell out of there. He takes 82% from a tri-attack and gets burnt. That's beautiful. He takes leftovers. I I um I want to get that spin off, so I go to my drill here, and he just goes for a heal bell. I'm like, okay, let's chill with me. I mean, okay, burns are healed, but you know, you still have a morbidly bad weakness to Porygon Z. He goes Roost, and I was Missy V in this act kill in this game, so I was slower, but Ravistin does make me quicker. So now the Rockstar for the rest of the game too, which is super helpful as well. And now I go back to Porygon Z, predicting him to go slow bro, and he does. And I can actually take it out with the Hyper Beam here. He goes to Rotom Heat though. So yeah, that's the first time I had to make a double switch, but all the other times are momentum generation. And then he doesn't even take the kill, he just goes for Bulk trying to generate a swoop, which I get because he's, you know, two and a half Pokemon behind, and I recharge that turn. But now I go to slow bro and I'm the wall again. So I can go for Yawn, and then I can just teleport right back out. Watch. So you see, I'm able to Yawn on the Soccer Punch so he doesn't do any damage to me. And now I can teleport right back out to my hand and dandy Porygon Z and collect my kill here. Actually, oh, I got Cinderace here. I'm just so scared of being slower than Tokus. Yeah, because I was running modest. That's right. All right, my bad. Now I get U-turn in the slow bro, and I'm back able to go to it again. So again, another time momentum shows that it's able to generate openings for breakers that are pretty frail, like Porygon Z. That's a third time that I was able to get that, you know, get my bread with Porygon Z, I guess. And you got Drone Tokus again here, and it's fine with me, yeah. He goes Nasty Plot here. I go Iron Head. He just barely lives. And now he misses. He would have to flinch me out. But anyway, I had Rillaboom to potentially revenge kill it. Plus, Cinderace got run it, and yeah, so it's fine anyway. He goes Cinderace here, and again, I'm like, okay, back slow, bro. He's gonna go Zen Headbutt. That's fine. I'll yawn it, and now I can just teleport out into my Porygon Z. Kill this with Beam again. That's like the fifth time, guys. That's just how crazy the opening that teleport and U-turn opening for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're not only going to see him go for bulk up again, but I could just go for the same yawn sequence. And it was pretty funny how this worked. He only poured on Z in for his fifth kill of the game. His third hyper beam kill at that. That should never happen. The opponent should just kill the board on Z. But regardless, it's amazing seeing how teleport, U-turn, full switch can open up for fringe breakers with a lot of power, but not a lot of defensive footprint. Like Porygon Z, it gives them a place on balance and bulky offensive teams. And I just think that's amazing. So. 
definitely be sure to try teams like this out. Try momentum out and let me know what you think of it below. Let me know what you think of the video below. And if you have any feedback, let me know below there as well with comments. Comment, 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 guys. And have a great day, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe as well. This is Metagame Monday. Peace out, guys. Have a great day. Bye.